Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu wins the All Progressive Congress presidential ticket. And former Minister of Science and Technology Obunaya Onu questions the All Progressive Congress for not zoning its presidential ticket to the southeast. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu has won the presidential ticket of the All Progressive Congress APC. He polled 1,271 votes to defeat other aspirants as the party's primaries happened in the Eagle Square in Abuja. He defeated Brotimia Mechi, who scored 316 votes, and the vice president, Yemi Oshibajo who got 235 votes. The presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress said on Wednesday that he did not expect to win the party's presidential primaries. He also said he holds no grudges against members of his party who walked against his candidature. Well, joining us to discuss this are uh, political analyst Bola Oba, Babashala Adebuyi, and media strategist Alfred Okuru. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Han. Great. It's been a very interesting 24 hours, almost 24 hours, if you ask me. I mean, the presidential primary started um, yesterday, early, let's say mid morning, and, and it took almost a whole day uh, into another uh, for the results to be read out. But uh, I think as we all were watching with keen interest. I mean, every single person had their eyes on the Eagle Square. I'm going to start with you, Bola. Um, was there any element of surprise for you, especially when the results were read, even uh, at the point where certain persons were stepping down uh, for the leader of the APC? Not at all, to be very honest with you. Not at all, because uh, I've always predicted or projected that an indirect primary would be paying to Bola Ahmed Tinobu's electoral capital. And the guy has built bridges for decades. He's been in building bridges for for, since 1992. And you know what? He knows what it takes to win an election, especially, you know, especially uh, an electoral college type of election. That is where you, when you, you put it into an uh, indirect election. So I've always projected that if a direct primary were to be conducted, it would have been the vice president to lose. But in a scenario of an indirect primary, which is more of an electoral college type uh, electioneering uh, system, I knew it was going to take it. Uh, the margin, I may not have. Uh, I think that we're having connection issues there with you, Bola. Mr. Alba, I think we're having connection issues with you, so I'm going to toss this question um, to Alfred. Alfred, uh, what stood up for you, especially, uh, just like I asked him, was the candidate who, you know, um, came up to say, well, they would have loved to, but they would step down for um, Bola Metinibu. Again, um, we were, the, camera, the cameras were really great at, you know, picking the body language and the demeanor of Mr. President, the Vice President, and so many other people. Uh, who sat, um, you know, behind that glass. But what really stood out for you, especially uh, for someone who's looking from the outside in? Well, um, just to even support what Mr. Bola said, I agree with him 100% in the sense that for indirect primary, primaries, this is politics at play. This is not human sentiments, none of those. And if you look at it from that perspective, Sinipo Tinubu, or that, however we want to call him, has been building this over time. If you check it, how many people has he helped to get into office? There are countless people. Do you expect these people to turn their backs on him? So the mode of primaries that APC chose favored him 
or when I, I don't know how they chose him, but there is no way, based on the capacity he's been building, for him to get to lose this. Because pretty much everybody there, one way or the other, has benefited from his generosity or from his politics or from his guidance, however you want to look at it. And there is no way. I wasn't even surprised. For me, at the end of the day, you could say, if you were looking at social media a few days back, you might think others had a chance. But if you understood politics, there is no way. Now, this is not the general election that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But like Mr. Bola said, this is indirect primaries. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at what was happening. Direct primaries, who knows? It's a toss-up. But for what happened yesterday, there was absolutely zero surprises. There might be speculation, but no surprises. Um, Baba Shala, you seem to be a bit surprised because uh, the APC seemed to be very um, good at spinning stories. We saw all kinds of confusion, um, you know, information coming from the, um, the chairman of the party saying that the president had endorsed an Ahmed Lawan. Um, we also saw uh, the Kogi state governor who was saying he will not step down for anyone except Mr. President asked him to. I mean, we saw all kinds of things spinning. We even at some point um, got some misinformation that the vice president may be stepping down for Bola Ahmed Tinubu, but all of those things were some sorts of a social media spin. But here we are, and you seem to be a bit surprised. Why? <laughs> uh, okay, um, thank you very much. First, uh, first of all, I want to congratulate uh, Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu for winning the uh, APC ticket to contest for the presidential election come 2023. Just like everyone has said, he has been building his career, political career since 1992, just like uh, Alaja Bubaka at uh, Atiku. So uh, today he has finally gotten the ticket to contest for the position, the highest stoppings in Nigeria. Now I was not surprised. I was not surprised actually, except I'm except I've been deceiving myself. The truth is, if you are contesting for a position, there are some things you ought to have done that would have benefited a lot of people, a lot of political career in the country. Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu has been in this position for a very long time. If he was a governor for eight years, he appointed a lot of people. He had the spending resources on a lot of people, a lot of things. We can also remember how he was able to fight in Lagos to get the resources of Lagos State uh, a local government fund that was held by the, uh, the federal government. Now, the guy is contesting, he has the structure all over the country. He has the structure all over the country. A lot of people saw something in him, and he believed so much in himself. We cannot compare him with uh, others. Let me use Professor Yemen Shibadu. Professor Yemen Shibadu became the vice president on the platter of gold. He was not a politician. He was appointed or nominated to be the vice president to uh, uh, President Mohamed Bahari. On being the vice president, he did not, he refused to build his own political structure. I cannot talk, point to anything in Nigeria that I can say is the political impact of the vice president. But, but I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Babashala, let me just quickly come in there. I don't want to talk over you. Uh, you, you sound like this is unprecedented. Let's take you back uh, down history. Um, Former President Goodluck Jonathan was also not necessarily uh, a politician per se. He was a career, let's say, public servant. Now, he, he rose from being a deputy governor to being a vice president and then a president. So when you sound like he was on a platter of gold, we can also refer to a Goodluck Jonathan as someone who has been lucky his whole political career. I mean, if, if, if the stars yeah. had aligned, maybe... That could have been the case they for Yemi totally and Shibanjo. They are totally Shibanjo, different. I beg your pardon. They are totally different. Good luck, Jonathan was a deputy governor. Yes, maybe he, the political career. He became the governor. And before we knew it, he became the vice president in Nigeria. So you cannot compare Good luck, Jonathan with uh, Professor Oshibaju. Now, we are talking of Professor Oshibaju, who was a lawyer defending his client going to court, doing all those things. I think the only political appointment he had was being a commissioner of, uh, uh, of justice in Lagos. Well, and yes. after, 
yes, if being a commissioner, it was a it was a career for him, not a political career per se. Now, all of a sudden, from nowhere, they said, okay, we are appointing uh, Oshimbajo to be the vice president to the uh, the, uh, the nominated uh, uh, presidential candidate of party. So it is totally different. Now, it became the vice president. There is no political base, no structure, no political impact. Even wherever, what the guy has been for the past seven years is to be supporting the, 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 the president. And now, coming out to contest for the president, Oh dear, um, I think we also we we've lost you there. Uh, let let me let me quickly toss now back to uh, Bola Bola. We lost. Back in. Okay, you you've come back. Okay, great. Go ahead. Okay, truly, I actually stand by him in this. I I wish yeah, I wish he is the winner, but unfortunately, the truth has to be told. The uh, political the political uh, terrain, Professor Oshibaju is not it at all. Well, I... you know, uh, please, if I may, um, the way I actually want to look at this is in, in support of what Mr. Shala is saying is that this is completely different from the ex-president good luck because number one is that on whose platform is the VP running on? It would have been different if Senator Tinubu was not running and anointed the VP to run on his behalf like he ran as a VP. Because that's the political structure. You need a structure. But do you, this is politics. But, but Alfred, do you think that the vice president, as of the Blues, just woke up because he had a vision from God to be the president? Uh, do you not think that there had been a hand, uh, the hand of Esau in this matter, saying, well, I think that you should run? Being that he's deputizing someone, don't you think he got a nod of sorts to be where he well, was? Well, that is... That is all for speculation because I personally, in my own capacity, I don't have any insider information. Do not believe he woke up to run against his principle. But his challenge is it doesn't change the fact that you're running against your principle, regardless of how, how we look at it. At the end of the day, we all know how he became the vice president of the country. I mean, he ran a general election. He ran a general uh, election, don't get me wrong. Let me, quickly, let me quickly add this to what uh, Alfred said. Hello? Yes, yes go ahead, Bola. Uh, like the other two Pentecostal, oh sorry, Pentecostal participants in that competition, he woke up on the wrong side of the bed one day and decided to run. And you know this no, how? Let's be very, let's be brass knuckle Let's not put honest with ourselves. One, the leader of the church where he worships and where is the pastor, and he had once prophesied that a member of the church was going to rule Nigeria. Number one. Number two, and the reason why I want to believe that he woke up one day being conceited that the voice of God was telling him to run was the same thing that uh, uh, Tunde uh, Bakari. This is the fourth occasion that Tunde Bakari would give would would give the impression that he was chasing an evangelistic prophecy and would come out with what you see in Pentecostalism, not only in Nigeria. I witnessed it in England, and I read so much about it in Latin America. These people don't feel remorseful. They have no condition. So this one has missed the target. They will do another blind this. Apart from it, there was another pastor, there was another Pentecostal pastor in this case. Uh, this. So I'm sitting there now knowing that if, look, I told a poll of the supporters of BP that they they uh, 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 added me to about six months ago. If it was going to be a direct practice, let's be very honest with ourselves, it would have garnered more traction than it did yesterday. But indirect primaries, especially in an environment where poverty has been weaponized and has been turned into Poverty has been weaponized and has been turned into a kind of bait. Mm. 
to, for the delegates, he had no chances. Okay. In fact, in fact, okay. in fact, I was even thinking, I was even thinking when others were stepping down, it was still going to step down. I did not I even, was. I, I, I did not even think Bola Ametinubu and Yeno Shibadjo would be contesting against this soldier. In fact, mm -hmm. I was telling my friend yesterday that, come, Bola uh, Yeno Shibadjo will have no choice than to step down. But I was surprised that the guy went ahead to contest. Well, I to all right. Maybe let's, because uh, of an assurance. All right, gentlemen, uh, gentlemen, gentlemen. Let's let let let's be orderly. Let me go back to the politics of it all. Let's talk about um, you know this Bola Ahmed Tinubu win because yes, now he's the flag bearer of the um, the APC. People will start you know um, hitting the numbers. People will start talking about. What change can he bring to the country? What turnaround can we see? Is this going to be business as usual? Again, looking at all of the people who are stacked um, as flag bearers for other parties. I mean, we might not know the names of so many of them, but we have also on one hand an Atiku Abubakar. We have a Peter B somewhere in the corner. We also have a Kwan Kwaso in the NNPP. These are some of the candidates that we know uh, who would who Tinubu will be up against. So I'm going to come back to you now, Alfred. Um, what, is the, what, what is the capital, uh, or rather, what is the walkability or the realistic aspects that a Tinubu win brings to these elections in itself? You see, um, I'm, I'm going to actually even go a little further in this because let's not confuse being a leader to being a good manager. You see? One of the things that we're going to look at, a leader builds a coalition. A leader appoints people. A leader sees things before others see it. A leader provides solution. Do I expect Ebola Ahmed to be able to wake up every day running up and down? No, I expect him to appoint people to positions, square pegs to square holes, things like that. For me, I honestly believe this is APC's election to lose, simply because they did not break apart. If APC had broken apart in the primaries, that's a different thing. Because now, if we look at the whole picture, you can confidently say that PDP is going to have a problem in the Southeast. Now, take away the Southeast votes for PDP. That's going to Labour Party. I would say majority of it. Now, you divide it. Where are the votes coming from? Will the Southwest vote PDP? I doubt it. So it's the northern votes we're splitting. Who's going to have a problem? Who's not going to have a problem? I do not know. But general elections are different ballgames. Just like Mr. Bola said, there was no contest the moment this was an indirect primary. Now, on the capacity of Bola Ahmed Tinubu, it depends on what angle you're looking at. It. I see him as a leader. Whether he's the greatest leader or not is a different ballgame. But you can tell that this man knows how to build a coalition. This man knows how to build a team. This man knows how to empower people. Now, look at his contestants. If we look at Pito B, um, ex governor Pito B, if you look at Pankwaso, if you look at ex VP article, which of them compared, if you compare all four together, which of them would you say has a bigger base? Which of them would you say have a bigger disciple? Which of them would you say is a bigger maker? of men in terms of when politics is involved. When we're talking about this, who supports people running primaries? Who supports people in their own elections and all that? I think that's where it's going to come down to, mm. the support of the people who build a bigger tent for others to okay. feed into. And at this point, I would say it's Senator Bala Ahmed Tinubu. Okay. It is election to lose. Um, let me come back to you, Babashala. What are the consequences of a tenable win this is a different way of asking the same question um because many people would say like he has said he thinks that he can build a coalition but then he also said in the same breath that being a leader and a good manager are two different things now nigeria does need leadership but in also needing leadership we need good managers you see where everything is going in the direction it is going in security the economy um unemployment um, I mean, the list is endless. Um, what is the implication of a Tinubu win for this country as it is right now? Okay. Um, for Tinubu, I believe that uh, majorly 
is held. There is no doubt that the man is not, uh, is, is, there is no doubt that the man is not 100% healthy. Of course, there is not. But his health, we can, all of us can say it, even in the public domain. So the question is, will his health permit him to concentrate more on the job at hand? That's number one. Number two, who are the people that will be selected for position? Because being a leader requires a lot of things. It requires res a responsibility and accountability. If you appoint people to do a job and you don't have that strength to monitor, to require for uh, uh, accountability from them, definitely it's going to affect your government. That's number two, uh, he has, when he was the governor of Lagos State, he was able to uh, do some things and the people will say, oh, it's the builder of Lagos State. And there are also a lot of accusations against uh, Ahmed Tinubu on how he has bought the whole Lagos, on how he has all those people. Now, he needs to prove that, being the president of Nigeria, he needs to prove that, that oh, I'm a plain man. I am not corrupt as any people, as you people have been calling me, and I'm ready to do what is necessary to bring the glory of Nigeria out. Mm -hmm. So make people believe that there is something in Nigeria that can attract people from abroad for a foreign investment and make Nigerians themselves believe in themselves. If Bola Tunubu fail, fails in this aspect of, of, of doing the right thing, of fighting corruption, of introducing the true federalism he has been campaigning for, if he fails of introducing the restructuring he has been campaigning for, for me, it has only become, it has only been saying something for the purpose of winning an election. We need to federalism in this country. We need what is called restructuring in this country. I, I, I'm, tem I'm tempted to ask you, I'm tempted to ask you this question and I want you to quickly answer so I can go to Boloba. Um, just as you said, that if he's unable to, if that's the probability there, if he even gets to win the general elections, but then that probability is something that I don't know. Let me ask it as a question. Is it something that we can afford? Uh, can we afford to toss a coin again as a country? Remember, I asked where we are now in 2022. Can we afford to uh, try again and see, or should we be more deliberate? I'm asking this because a President Buhari is somebody who tried to run for this office four times. The fourth time, he had the opportunity. He told us everything that we wanted to hear. He promised, he made very lofty promises. And I don't want to say anything but ask, has he been able every, to, to scratch the surface of all of those things? So should we be um, you know, going out on a limb again uh, this time around? Every politician you meet will tell you what you want to hear. It's a different ball game when they get to the office. Whether he, whether he has, uh, is going to do it or not, it, we don't have a choice. We really? have article, we have him, and we have Peter Bain. We do not have order. a choice? Really? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going there. We don't have a choice. Because or not until they get there, or not until they get to the office, that we're able to say, oh, he said it and he did it. As far as I'm concerned, they are all promises. They are all promises. And promises, you cannot hold anybody for promising you anything. You can only hold them for owing you. So okay. if they fail the promises, it, it, it is promised. Okay. So you can't hold them. You can only use it against them. Maybe okay. in the subsequent election. All right, let me come to you. You see, to even add to that. Okay. No. Yeah, let me just quickly, I'll come back to you, Alfred. Let me quickly go to Bola. Bola, um, we see that the PDP is having closed door meetings right now. As soon as they heard the win, we, we got uh, reports that the PDP and, of course, um, the PDP governors, I beg your pardon, and um, the presidential candidate of the uh, PDP were in closed door meetings today. Um, what do you think the strategy would be? I'm asking because from judging from what Babashala is saying is that, well, maybe we don't have our hands are tied. We just wait until the person gets into office that we can decide if they're capable of doing what they've asked us to do. But what about the voter um, also preempting these politicians so that they do not feel that we really have our hands tied behind, behind our backs? 
this election in the 2023 presidential elections, you are going to have three alumni of the Shehu Musa Yadwar School of Politics. Plutocracy matched with kleptocracy playing playing uh, the advantage of what the playing the advantage of weaponizing of using poverty as a weapon against the electorate. Don't fool yourself. Atiku while I met in Umbu, Kwankwaso, they were disciples of Shehu Musa Yadua, and they were members of the PDM movement. If any one of my colleagues uh, remembers. Now, if you look at the politics of Atiku and the politics of Bola Metinubu, and you know, uh, even the ostensibly uh, uh, the populist politics of Kwan Kwan So, we can see that the two most successful out of there are the two who have replicated what Shehu Musa Yadua did, especially in the Southwest. When it came, I once had a personal encounter. A personal location with uh, uh, Baba Dedibu before he passed on. And I said, Baba Dedibu, how could a show of Mosaya who had come all the way from Katsina and come down to Ibadan and Lagos and come and defeat the likes of Jack Onde and some of the other greats of Awolo, uh, uh, in, this, in Awolo School of Politics? And you know what Baba Dedibu told me? Babadeh Dibu told me a classical or your Yoruba, the which I will translate. I will endeavor to translate that but the guy knew how to play politics with money. My brother Atiku Abola Ametimungu today became the flag bearer of the two major political parties in Nigeria because they have always used money. To build bridges. So, so, so quickly. The, how? Where does that leave us? Because uh, we complain. Uh, where, we complain about. We complain about uh, the the level of corruption, even under a government uh, that had sworn that they were going to fight no, corruption. No, that, that, where does that leave uh, us? If we're buying perfect. votes at the party level, what happens to the general elections in closing? Corruption. Uh, corruption is not a problem in Nigeria. Is Anywhere it? in the world, in any in any liberal democracy. Uh, there is corruption. You need a leader who can spin ideas there and create a team that can chase good ideas. You are not as corrupt as Southern Italy. You are not the last three governors, the last three out of the four governors of the state of Illinois in America are in prison. Why are you messed up our politics by making your people believe that corruption is not your, is your problem? That is why all that worry and the lack of creativity and value innovation, we are deeper in the mess. Okay. And he, he has essentially right. has to capitulate to corruption. Okay. Corruption is not a problem in Nigeria. The pro your problem is lack of leadership creativity and, and value and value innovation in leadership. Because Nigerians are entrepreneurially, we are so entrepreneurially uh, uh, powerful that when we when we see a good ball, we can change and make good okay. value of it. All right, because we because because, because we're running out of time quickly, Alfred, you wanted to t uh, you know chip in something. We need to wrap up. Um, yeah, absolutely. It, yeah. go ahead. Please. Go ahead. No, um, I actually agree a little bit of what Mr. Bola said, along with what Mr. Shola said, because number one is that, yeah, I want to agree that corruption is not Nigeria's problem. Corruption is an extract of a major problem. Okay, so it's not our immediate problem. It's an extract. Something is leading towards that. I feel our biggest problem is vacuum of leadership. Now, if we talk about the issue, if we talk about where really are we going, Number one is that we don't run an ideology-based politics. Somebody can move from APC to PDP, from PDP to labor, with zero consequence. 
So what really option do we have? We want to believe we have options. We have individuals that are running for power. None of them is running based on an ideology. Who's a conservative? Who's a liberal? Who's a moderate? We do not know. I believe our democracy is still too young. And number one is let's not get caught up with this issue of instant gratification. Just like you mentioned, can we afford to? Why can't we afford to? Nothing happens automatically. It takes time. You have to build it. It's a question of now, let's even get people to participate. We first have to start playing inclusive politics, mm. whereby if somebody does not make a promise, like Mr. Shola said, if somebody makes a promise and does not perform, punish him at the polls in the next election. Mm. We cannot always be in a hurry saying, we don't have time, we don't have time. Since when have we been saying this? Since 1999, who has ever paid politically for corruption? Mm. So if you ask me at the end of the day, I will hope Nigeria wins. And by Nigeria winning, it's not just about who won. It's a question of how did you win? Why did we vote for you? I also believe in protest votes. Whereby, right. rather than voting for these two people, let me vote for someone else to make you realize that, you know what? My vote counts. I don't right. think Nigeria will get fixed All right. That's why I will campaign for Peter Obi. I will campaign for Peter Obi in this round of election. Okay. All I right. I really want Peter Obi to get more than two million. Okay. We have to go. We, we have to go. Have I, and and this is party. no, no, no. There's no, there's no room for campaigning on the show. Not today. I'll send you an invoice no, if you have to. <laughs> well, I want to say thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> time to time is not on our side. Uh, and uh, Alfred Okolo, I want to appreciate you guys for being part of the conversation. Thank you. Thank it's you. been a pleasure. All thank right. you, guys. Well, thank pleasure. you all for talking yeah. with us. We will take a quick break, and when we come back, we will be looking at what one of the presidential aspirants, um, Obunaya Onu, had to say about the issue of zoning in the APC. Stay with us. We'll be right back.